Hey everybody, this is Debbie Ray, the owner of PedigreePups.com, and today I'd like to take some time to share a little information with you about another one of the AKC uh, dog breed groups, and this one I'd like to talk to you today with, about is the Hound Group. Exactly, what is the Hound Group? <clears throat> the Hound Group is, or were breeds that were bred to to help man capture game by tracking prey using their wonderful senses of sight or smell. And hunting is probably the job that comes uh, most easily to mind when using any of the hound breeds. Today hunting with dogs is mostly considered a sport. Some hounds use their incredible acute senses of smell to follow a trail and these are classified as scent hounds. And there are other types of hounds that can relentlessly run down their quarry because of their incredible speeds and stamina and these are classified as scent, excuse me, as sight hounds. So the AKC hound group is filled with members who love to track prey basically on one of these two concepts, using their sight or using their senses of smell. So what exactly are the, the hound breeds, or what are the members of this group? Well, let's talk about a few of them. And the first breed we'll talk about is the Afghan Hound. Now the Afghan Hound is an aristocrat. This is a very ancient dog breed, and its whole appearance is one of dignity and nobility. They're very athletic, and they're also very aloof. These dogs can appear particularly standoffish with strangers, and they're very uh, independent as well. These dogs are sight hounds, and they're extremely fast and agile. They need a lot of room to run in a fenced area and under supervision on a daily basis. Um, I wouldn't let these dogs off a lead at any time unless they were in a fenced area that was that was very uh, tightly, um, you know, closed up or whatever, just to make sure they didn't get loose. Due to their extreme speed, you'd never catch them if they did get loose. Um, the Afghans are free participants in using. Uh, their speed in lure coursing events. They're covered with a thick mane of long silky hair and this requires hours of grooming each week to maintain that beautiful appearance. And the next dogs we'll talk about are foxhounds. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's talk about the English and the American as well. Now concerning foxhounds, the American is an ideal choice for those people who live in rural areas or on large farms. George Washington Moffin is considered to be the father of the breed. His dogs were considered some of the fastest running foxhounds ever produced during his lifetime. The dog breed's origins date back to the early 1700s in the states of Virginia and Maryland. By the mid 1700s, these hounds, uh, or watching these hounds follow prey, became a favorite pastime, especially for those people that were of the upper class. These main strains, the Walker, Trigg, Hudspeth, Calhoun, July, and Goodman, make up the major portions of what is called the American Foxhound by the AKC today. Now concerning the English Foxhound, which you see on the right hand side of the screen, the English Foxhound is a very intelligent and courageous packhound. They have a very cheerful and determined disposition. These dogs were bred to hunt and to run for great distances as well. And they are amazingly, amazingly agile and they have the ability to track down and find its target but also to make the kill when needed. Very minimal grooming is required for this dog. The English Foxhound also needs a lot of exercise and they are happiest with people who live in rural areas or on large farms. Generally speaking, owners tend to consider the English Foxhounds to be more aloof than their American counterparts. And the Basenji. And the Basenji is a dog that's, that's well known for its ability that it doesn't bark, but it does make a yodeling type of sound. And these are often called chortles, squeals, whines, and sometimes yodel or baroo. While it is true that these dogs don't really bark like other dogs, they are great mimics and they can learn to easily mimic barks if raised among barking dogs. Their wrinkled head is proudly carried on a well-arched neck and their tail is set high and curled. They hunt by both sight and scent. This is a small, short-haired hunting dog from Africa. They are very smart dogs and they excel at any kind of mentally or physically uh, challenging activities. They would do well in an apartment or a small home if exercised sufficiently. They do need uh, two or three, or excuse me, they do well if they are living with two or three other dogs of the same breed. And generally speaking, they don't fight among themselves and they provide each other great company. Now the Basset Hound, uh, the foremost use of it in the United States is for the use of hunting rabbits. Now it's true that Bassets love food, and it's also true that they're less physically energetic than most dog breeds. 
The Basset Hound is a very laid-back, social, and affectionate dog. They're also very good for children and adults of all ages. This breed is considered a wet mouth breed, which means they do drool quite a bit. So make sure you have a slobber rag if you have a Basset. Extra care must be taken around swimming pools if you have a Basset because with the majority of the weight being in the front of the dog and with them having such short legs, it makes it very, very hard for them to swim and then only for short distances. So you just want to make sure that you keep a close eye on uh, your Basset if you have a pool and make sure you always have a life preserver on it. These dogs are scent hounds and they're bred to hunt by scent alone. In trailing ability, the accuracy of this dog, of his nose, makes him second only to bloodhounds. And when there's nothing better to do, Bassets like to sleep. And the Beagle. The Beagles come in two sizes, the 13 inch and also the 15 inch. They're basically a big nose with a stomach on four legs. Now these are scent hounds and they're used primarily for hunting rabbits and hares in the field. They're an ideal companion for children. They should never be alone, allowed to roam free, however, because that nose will surely get them into some kind of trouble. They are prone to several different conditions. They can cause poor, poor skin or coat problems such as hyperthyroid disease or zinc responsive dermatosis. Always use a leash when you're walking this dog breed since they do tend to follow their noses and can leave you in search of quarry if they're given the chance. They're prone to wandering as well, especially the unneutered males. These dogs are extremely scent oriented and they're food obsessed, so obesity is fairly common with beagles, you know, if you don't keep a watch on them. Help prevent it by encouraging your dog to regular, regularly exercise. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the black and tan coon hound is used primarily for trailing and for training raccoons. They also uh, run their game down and they, they follow by scent. These dogs are a very fantastic athlete. They're well known for howling after their quarry once they tree it. The characteristics are, of this breed are courage and it also uh, they're very efficient for hunting other other things like deer or bear or mountain lion or other big game. Due to their hunting instincts they should never be turned loose or exercised unless you know within the confines of a securely fenced area. They are not recommended for apartment life. Coon hounds are medium sized dogs or medium to large sized dogs and they can adapt to living either inside or outside. Be forewarned this breed does drool and slobber and a lot. Also vigorous daily exercise is needed to keep this dog healthy and happy. Now the bloodhound is considered the ultimate scent hound. These dogs should never be allowed to roam free without supervision or off leash in an unfenced area. This breed is also known to be very independent, tough, and often, oftentimes a bit stubborn. They may decide to follow a scent and disappear in an instant on the trail of whatever the interesting scent is. They can be extremely focused and energetic, especially once they begin to trail a scent. It just takes a moment for these dogs to take off and then they're gone. They do need a lot of exercise. They have an incredible stamina and they can walk for hours on end. This breed is definitely not for everyone, but they are very good with children and other pets, and also they are one of the most gentle dog breeds a family can have under the roof. They may chase small animals, however. They love all the attention they receive from their families and they make excellent family pets. Now the Borzoi was originally bred for the coursing of wild game on more or less open terrain and they relied typically on their, their sight rather than scent. Once these dogs were known as the Russian Wolfhound, they are often described as long-haired greyhounds. Very, there is a very special emphasis placed on the sound running gear, a strong neck and jaws, the courage of the animal, agility, and all this combined with the proper conditioning. Due to the sighthound heritage and the amazing speed that these dogs have, they should never be let off a leash or let to roam outside of a fenced yard. They are also very quiet dogs who seldom bark. They are considered a giant breed, and it'll, but it will happily curl up in your corner of your house somewhere and, and rest comfortably if allowed to. They are very good with older children and other pets if raised with them. And just a thing to note, this breed usually views any small fast moving animal as something to chase down and catch, so just keep that in mind. And the Dotson comes in three different varieties. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on the screen you can see a picture of each. The long coat, the smooth coat, and the wire coat. These dogs were developed in Germany more than 300 years ago to hunt badgers. And the breed's name is German and quite literally it translates into badger dog. Although these dogs are hounds, they typically have more of a feisty terrier personality. 
their hunting spirit, good nose, they have a loud voice and a very distinctive build make them well suited for below ground work or hunting in any kinds of hole dwelling animals or beating the bush. In the United States they are often affectionately referred to as weenie dogs, wiener dogs, doxy, hot dog or sausage dog. They also make very good companions whether you live in a small apartment or in the country. The Greyhound is one of the fastest breeds of dog in the world and they are also one of the biggest couch potatoes. They are also one of the fastest land, animals, land, man, land mammals known. Forgive me. These guys are also referred to as the 45 mile an hour couch potato. They are not high energy, energy dogs even though they are fantastic running machines. The typical racing gait of the breed is a double suspension gallop which means all four feet are off the ground twice during each full stride when this dog reaches full speed. It's essential that owners of these dogs provide, provide them with a soft place to rest and sleep because they can easily develop pressure sores. Due to their lack of an undercoat and lack of body fat, they are very susceptible to extreme temperatures or extreme temperature changes. So the best home for these dogs is inside with the family. And the Harrier. And the Harrier is a dog that a lot of people may not be aware of, but it is a scent hound also and it was developed in England to hunt hare in packs. It's the name Harrier. It very much resembles a, a foxhound, but is smaller in overall size. They are very active, well balanced, and full of strength, and they are able to work tirelessly no matter what the terrain for long periods of time. In fact, these dogs should be considered a smaller version of the English foxhound, somewhere between the beagle and the English foxhound in size. They were developed primarily to hunt hare, but the breed also has been used for hunting fox. Its name, however, reveals the breed's true hunting specialty, hare. And these dogs do need uh, a lot of exercise because they're very energetic. And the Abyssin Hound is a very even-tempered and affectionate dog. They're very loyal uh, and they're very versatile and they're also very trainable. And the Abyssin's clean-cut lines, those large prick ears and the light pigment give it a very unique ap appearance. And the Abyssin history can easily be traced back to around 3400 BC. These dogs are hunting dogs whose quarry is primarily rabbits. He makes an excellent family pet and is well suited to the breed ring, obedience, tracking, or lure coursing. There are three varieties of obesin, smooth hair, long hair, and wire coated. Beasters often require a great deal of exercise and they should only be allowed off a leash within a, a secure fenced area. They are very agile dogs and they are able to jump great heights from a standstill and require a great deal of exercise. So it's recommended if you own one of these dogs that you have a fence of at least six foot in height. Now the Irish Wolfhound is the tallest of all dogs. If you were to stand them on, the hind, on their hind legs they could easily reach up to seven feet tall. The Irish Wolfhound is a large sensitive dog who requires lots of space to accommodate his great size and he also requires an owner who can give him lots of companionship. Wolfhounds should never be allowed, uh, are allowed to run loose. A remarkable combination of power, swiftness, and keen eyesight, this dog breed is, is a very, very fast dog breed, so you want to make sure that if something happened, you know, you want to keep it on a leash just to keep that from happening, or to keep anything from happening. This dog breed is very old, possibly dating as far back as the first century BC or earlier. Originally these were war dogs and they were used to drag men out of chariots or off horseback during combat. They do get along well with other dogs and other pets if raised with them. They're not recommended for apartment life. Now the Norwegian elk hound is a remarkable combination of power, swiftness, and keen sight. They do prefer cooler climates, and they're a medium-sized, sensitive dog who requires a lot of space to accommodate his size. These dogs should never be allowed to run loose. Some of the elk hound's favorite talents include tracking, hunting, herding, sledding, guarding, watchdogging, and agility. Elk hounds shed huge amounts of fur twice a year, so be forewarned. As with all other dog breeds, they also require regular brushing to maintain a healthy coat. They thrive on human companionship and will prove to be a lifelong and loyal friend to anyone who takes the time to, to show them a good, a good loving home. Now the otter hound is another large breed of dog that was developed in England to hunt otter. They generally weigh around 80 to 120 pounds so this is a pretty large breed of dog. This breed also has, among other things, webbed feet and a rough double coat. 
It has an extremely sensitive nose, and it is very inquisitive and perseverant in investigating any kind of scent that it's, you know, it hasn't come across before. This hound hunts its quarry on land and also in water. They do get along well with other animals, and they're good-natured with children. They also have a very, very melodious voice, which they're well known to use freely. They're very energetic dogs who need lots of room for exercise and exploration. A fence yard is a must for owners of this dog breed. Now the Petit Bassac Griffon Vidion, I probably said that really wrong, but anyway, the PBGV is what I'll call it, have only been known in the United States until since about the 1980s. Because of their raggedy, scruffy good looks uh, and their sparky personality, these dogs have won the hearts of many admirers. Although a scent hound, he is much more like a terrier. They're very curious little dogs, busy, determined, and very smart, needing lots of ex exercise and attention. Their double coat should be left natural, and it, a lot of grooming is not needed with this breed. The PBGV are very good family dogs, but they do demand attention if their owner does not give it to them. They're generally good with other dogs, however, they should not be trusted with non-canine pets. A bored or lonely PBGV will make up its own entertainment, and if may make up something that you're not happy with, so make sure they have lots of toys, chews, and things to keep them busy. Now the Pharaoh Hound is a very ancient breed. They make a wonderful watchdog and because they're very observant and they possess a very keen eyesight. They also have acute hearing and they can bark promptly at the approach of any strangers. The Pharaoh must be permitted to make up his own mind about people in any kind of situation. They're very playful and they like children, but they can't be expected to readily accept children they don't know. These dogs are also very fast and they're very alert. They're not a good candidate for apartment life unless the owner is prepared to give them lots of daily exercise. They should not be trusted with any kind of small non-canine pets. It's also very important not to let this dog off a leash except in this safely contained area that has a really tall fence because they're great jumpers. This dog breed originated in ancient Egypt where it's thought to have been brought from Egypt by the Phoenicians when they settled in the Mediterranean islands and these dogs have existed for well over 2,000 years. The Plot Hound. And the Plot Hound is one of the newer uh, additions to the AKC Hound breed. And the Plot Hound is a very alert, intelligent, and confident hunter. They are well known for their stamina and endurance, as well as agility, and they're very determined dogs. They're bold, fearless, aggressive, and, uh, and especially aggressive. They're, let me try that one more time. They're bold, fearless, and very aggressive when hunting. This powerful, well-muscled, and streamlined hound combines courage with very incredible athletic abil ability. They do need a lot of physical exercise. Built for anything, they even have webbed feet. These dogs are great family pets, and they do well with all members of family, even children, but socialization is highly, highly recommended. Early socialization and obedience training are advised. And by the way, I do uh, advise you um, to always have a slobber rag around because they do drool and slobber quite a lot. This dog breed originated in the mountains of North Carolina in the United States around the mid-1700s. They are an American dog breed through and through, and they're also the state dog of North Carolina. Now the Rhodesian Ridgeback is a breed of dog that is able easily to receive, retrieve, to track, to hunt game, and also to protect your property. These dogs are still considered hunting dogs. Their, uh, their absolute nature is to hunt, chase, corner, or tree any kind of game. They like the thrill of the chase. The Ridgeback is a large muscular dog originally bred in South Africa to hunt lions. Because of their ability to harass a lion and keep it at bay while awaiting their master, they are also known as the African Lion Hound. The colors are reddish gold to wheaten. Ridgebacks are also known to be very loyal, intelligent, and gentle dogs but they're also very independent and they need independent thinkers who can outsmart them. Uh, they're also very aloof around strangers. The best known feature of this breed is the ridge of hair which grows forward on its back. It consists of a fan-like area, or it's called crowns, and these taper uh, from immediately behind the shoulders all the way down to the dog's hip area. Now the Saluki is the royal dog of Egypt, and it's perhaps one of the oldest dog breeds known to man. It's identified by some historians as a very distinct breed and type, 
as long ago as 329 BC when Alexander the Great in invaded India. The whole appearance of this breed should give an impression of grace, symmetry, great speed, and endurance. They're also strength, they have a lot of strength, and they also need a lot of activity to maintain, uh, just to maintain the dog, to keep them happy. These dogs are able to kill gazelle and quarry uh, over deep sand or rocky mountains. Unlike other dog breeds, these dogs are not viewed as unclean by the Bedouins because of their royal background and their clean living habits, so these dogs were actually allowed to sleep inside their owner's tents. There are also several stone encryptions depicting uh, these young dogs, or these dogs with a young King Tutankhamun um, years and years and years ago. This is a very active breed who likes the outdoors and should never be left off a leash or left to roam outside a fenced area. Adequate fencing is a must because they can easily jump a five foot fence if they so desire. Okay, next let's talk about the Scottish Deerhound. And Scottish Deerhounds are very large, easygoing dogs. They have a very shaggy, harsh coat and they shed very little. The Deerhound is very closely related to the Irish Wolfhound, but their general conformation is that of a Greyhound of a much larger size. Their chest is deep and it's really broad but it's not too narrow overall. A uh, good girth of chest is indicative of great lung power which these dogs need to be able to run, exercise, and hunt. Deerhounds should never be left off lead unless they are in a secure area due to their great speed and love of chase. They're relatively inactive indoors and they make great house pets. And the last dog we'll talk about in the AKC Hound group today is the Whippet. Now the Whippet was originally bred to pursue and capture small game. These dogs are very quiet and they're also very intelligent. Generally speaking, they don't bark unnecessarily, but they are very adaptable, fitting in well with other children, other dogs, and even cats. They are a hardy breed. They're tough, swift, and powerful, and very athletic with a stable and steady disposition. This breed is a medium-sized sight hound, giving the appearance of elegance and fitness, but they are also very, very fast. They're powerful and they have great balance. These dogs are truly a, a true sporting hound that covers a maximum distance with a minimum of lost motion. If you'd like to learn more about other AKC purebred dog breeds or if you'd like to learn about other AKC dog breed groups such as the working dogs or the herding dogs or the terriers or anything like that, please visit my website and that's www.pedigreedpups.com. I hope you've enjoyed this information and I hope you've learned something and uh, have a good day.